What connects Diana, Princess of Wales, the former BBC correspondent and Tatton MP Martin Bell, and the Nobel Peace Prize? Well, they're all linked to the Manchester-based landmines charity, the Mines Advisory Group. MAG celebrates its 20th anniversary this year, so we asked Martin Bell to compile this special report for us. How can countries which manufacture and trade in these weapons square their conscience with such human devastation? Over 40 years I've visited some 18 war zones and seen for myself the issues that so motivated Diana, Princess of Wales. That's why I too am a passionate supporter of MAG and impressed by how far it has come since the early days in a caravan in Cockermouth. Ray McGrath, a former soldier, was so horrified by the landmine injuries he had witnessed as an aid worker that he decided to do something about it. I can remember uh, being up in the hills in Pattier and wandering along with these Mujahideen who were guides taking us to some of the communities that had problems and coming across the remains of this little kid, you know, blown up by a, by a landmine. But nobody knew uh, where he came from. Uh, he must have died up there on his own. I can't see a problem and then sit around and say, well, somebody's going to come and solve this. I've always been a person who, without thinking, is going to try and solve it myself. The Mines Advisory Group has come a long way since it was set up by Ray McGrath and his brother Lou. It does not just advise, it acts. Over 20 years, it has cleared millions of mines and unexploded ordnance. It has helped communities all over the world to reclaim their land and rebuild their lives. It is currently working in 17 countries. The operation is controlled from the charity's headquarters here in the centre of Manchester. Hello, Martin. Good to see you. Happy you. Gosh, you well. What an amazing place. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Most people in the northwest have got no idea this amazing organisation is in the middle of them. What would you like them to know about you? Well, I'd like them to know we're here. I'd like to know them to know that, you know, that uh, from this office here in Manchester, uh, we control uh, operations in Southeast Asia, in countries throughout Africa and the Middle East. MAG was honoured with the Nobel Peace Prize in 1997 for its life-saving work and the role it played persuading governments to sign the treaty to ban anti-personnel mines. Just months earlier, Diana had visited Angola to see landmine clearance work for herself, and the publicity surrounding her trip was absolutely crucial to the campaign. Lou, how influential was Diana, Princess of Wales, in your work? Well, enormously influential. She actually brought the press along. She brought everyone on board. She knew how to use the, the media, uh, and it was uh, such a difference for our work uh, in putting pressure on the government. And that speech she made, what, two months before her death? You were there, I was there. What was the impact of that? Um, I, I think uh, it was at that point that uh, in conversations before she made that speech that she decided that this was her cause and uh, we couldn't have got a better advocate uh, on board. Some people chose to interpret my visit as a political statement but it was not. I am not a political figure and as I said at the time and I'd like to reiterate now my interests are humanitarian. No country has suffered more from the effects of unexploded ordnance than Laos, which was secretly bombed by the Americans during the Vietnam War without the US Congress even knowing about it. Three generations later, people live with the consequences every day, being killed and injured by the bombs that were dropped. And that's what all these pictures are. These are all reminders, aren't they? Yes, some of them are the day by day. Um, there's so much uh, in Laos uh, that is still all these remnants, bits of remnants of war. These boats Photographer Sean Sutton of, um, has spent the last 12 years working for MAG. His images tell their own story. These are deadly reminders. You see next to this shop here, 
there's this bomb that's with sort of US written on it. They also had defused cluster bombs for sale inside the shop. I mean, he's selling this thing? Um, I think if you offered enough money, he'd sell it, that's for sure. But, and here you see another one that's actually live in a field. And sadly, every day people get blown up by these things. one of the distinctive features of landmines that they discriminate against the innocent, against civilians and among civilians, especially boys and girls. What we try to do is warn them of the dangers, uh, try to get them involved in talking to each other, um, to actually uh, understand the threat they face. I have seen the dangers at first hand in war zones across the world, as here in Bosnia in 1996, with Croatian and British soldiers working together on post-war mine clearance. Yugoslavia used to be one of the world's largest manufacturers of mines. Now, by a bitter irony, it is threatened by the mines it made, an estimated two to six million of them. We still don't know how many mines remain hidden. We do know that in Bosnia alone, there are one and a half thousand square kilometers of suspected contaminated land waiting to be cleared. The way that they function is when they're stepped on, it is the actual explosive content of the mine which creates the damage. Phil Halford is a landmine expert, a former soldier with the Royal Engineers he has spent a lifetime studying them and disarming them. These days, he acts as a specialist advisor on mine clearance for MAG. This is for demonstration only. The mines have been defused. And there's one directly in front of Martin. OK? So again, within five feet. Can anybody spot it? Can you see that? Oh, I see it. Yes. Yes, of course. Detecting landmines takes a sharp eye and a steady hand and nerve. MAG has an excellent safety record, but there is no such thing as total safety in mine clearance. The alternative is to leave these engines of death in the ground forever. I think the main thing about it is that you know, we instill um, a tremendous amount of, of, of training into the guys. And with training comes confidence. And the fact that when we are working together, as a team and we instill that teamwork in everybody, it becomes almost part of routine. There is still much to be done to realize Diana's dream of a world without landmines. But MAG's life-saving work is making a daily difference to people's lives. We have all of MAG to thank for that and Ray and Lou McGrath for making it possible. This is truly something for Manchester to be proud of. The work that is being carried out by our staff in the field um, is saving people's lives day in and day out. And it's also saving uh, lives of those who would be killed in the future if no one does anything about these munitions. Uh, we're leaving a terrible legacy. And it's from this office here in Manchester, those three and a half thousand staff that we have around the world are actually solving that problem.